And what a great way to start it. One of the top bodybuilders around, Lee Labrada, 5'6", 185 pounds. He's from Houston, Texas. Oh, wow, look at this. Isn't I didn't see that. Isn't that cool? <laughs> <laughs> God dang. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, the, the, uh, got Hunter on this side. That's, this is in, when you yeah. started out, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This you is can like, see the difference. This was from, uh, I want to say this was about the time that he won, had just won nationals or had just won his first pro show. But you can see the, the, the huge difference. Well, you can see the made. growth. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, and then God, uh, man. Yeah, we got a few throwbacks here, you know, from uh, when I was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2004. This picture right here was taken. Um, it was in Greece. In Greece, on, yeah. the, on the Greek Parthenon, the day after I won the 1988 um, Professional Greek Grand Prix. And uh, I had this in my apartment. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I you had this in my apartment. You know how old that poster is? That poster, I'm that, almost embarrassed to tell you how old that poster is. I'll tell yeah. you, it was like from <laughs> mid 80s for sure. It was. I was 25 years old in that picture right there. And uh, it Isn't was the poster. Ed, Ed Kowak? That was Ed, Ed Kowak, yep. Yeah. And Frank Richards. Um, and uh, this was my first uh, uh, professional bodybuilding show. It was my pro debut, which I won in uh, New York City, and I was actually on the uh, on the poster for it. You know, so that was uh, that was a really really cool surprise, given that it was my first show. We got some space here for future wins and future pictures. Hey guys, so Lee Labrada here, and I'm with my long-term training partner, Craig the Surf, who used to train with me back in the Mr. Olympia training days. We're out here on a Saturday, and we're gonna be training some back. So, uh, hey, let's get to it. We'll start with pull downs. Am I getting paid for this? <laughs> that's, that's a pretty smooth machine, too. Yeah, it's a really smooth machine. Yeah, the important thing on these is to keep your back arched. You know, and then bring the elbow down and back, you know, to contract the uh, contract the lat. Dude, do you remember those machines that Joe Gold used to have? Yeah. At uh, at World Gym. Worlds. Yeah. Those were all hand welded. Oh yeah. By him. Do you remember the one that was the long pulley row? Yeah. Maybe we'll do some of those today, just for old times' sake. Oh yeah. Yeah, the long pulley row, and uh, he welded this machine. It was the same one that was in pumping iron. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Couldn't even move. Couldn't move the machine. That's for sure. Oh yeah, that thing was just a beast. <laughs> He was ahead of his time. You yeah. know, Joe, Joe made a lot of machines that were better than what was commercially available even back then. The important thing to remember when you do these is to pull with your lats. And to do that, you gotta have an arch in your back and you gotta think about pulling your elbows down and back. So from this position here, we wanna get a nice arch in the back and we want to pull the elbows down and back. You want to make sure that at the finish of the motion that you don't that you don't round your back because then it puts all the stress on the bicep. You want to make sure that you have a nice arch and you want to pull the elbows down and back. Okay, let's roll. All right, here we go. Make it a comeback. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Glen Willow. <laughs> I'll be Mr. Angleton or Sugar Land. <laughs> Just cover Mr. Fort Bend. Mr. Let's go, come Mr. on. Mr. Labrada's gym. Come on. Got it? All right, one more. Okay, good. So, been doing this since we were 16 years old. So I'm almost afraid to tell you how long that is. One late. But you know what? Come on, let's go. There you okay. go. Good man. Come on. Let's roll. Got it, I'm here. Go. Okay, let's go. Good. Come on, Greg. Two. Go. All right, two. Let's go. That's you, man. Let's go. That's you. Okay. Good job. Just got over being sore from the last work. I <laughs> know it was. That was a month ago. <laughs> like I said. <laughs> so we're still doing, still doing push pull. You know, which is to say back and biceps, which is what we're gonna be doing today. On a separate day, chest, shoulders, and triceps, and on a separate day, legs. Let's do one warm up, and then we'll, and then we'll load her up. But uh, this machine is not real easy to find, but it's great because you can do, you know, a uh, isolated one-handed pull down off. It's really, really nice. So we're gonna bring the elbow down into the waist. 
Try to isolate that lat. Oh yeah. Yeah. Another one of your better flawless body parts. Well, it wasn't it wasn't my biggest body part, but it was uh, it was developed. Yep. Come on, Lee. Yeah, you can't even hear that thing work. Yeah, and it's how, how yeah. quiet it is. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No cables. You know, it's all. Uh, no chains. Yep. It's no chains, no pulleys, anything. I love this thing. There you go. Just pull it down nice and slow. Almost like an iso isolation curl that we do for biceps. This is for your lats. Yeah, that's 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 pretty. It's good feel, right? Yeah, man. That's a god dang. Craig, how the machines have changed since you had your gym here in Houston, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> it doesn't need to be fancy to get a great workout. No. You know, you could you could get a great workout with simple barbells and dumbbells. Yep. You know, where there's a will, there's a way. Got it? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay. Not so much. Hey, you make me work for it. Back in the day, I would use uh, straps when I was training back on certain things like bent over rows, for instance. You know, we used to do a lot of barbell bent over rows. And I would, uh, I would do that to basically help me keep my focus on, on uh, getting the weight up with my back rather than fighting it with my forearms. For the most part, I didn't like to use straps unless the weight was just heavy enough that it would necessitate it because I thought that uh, by not using the straps, it would help me to develop my forearms more. Hey, you're still strong, man. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go, Lito. I'm gonna get eight by myself. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Come on. Awesome form. Positive thoughts. Got it? Good. Oh, I'm gonna feel that one tomorrow. Come on. I got it, I got it. I'm gonna get two more. Okay. Okay. All right, one more. Here we go. Go. Good. 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 Dude, those lats are cranking. Okay. Good. Oh no. All right, come on, one more. Let's try. Okay. All right. <clears throat> All right, man. Slap it. Yeah, buddy. Man, your back looks freaking great, dude. Thank you, man. It's going through the. It's going through the T-shirt. Mine goes through the T-shirt. It doesn't go down as a V. It kind of goes like this. See the bullshit. We, See we the didn't bullshit. joke this, to, we didn't joke this up, much during the 80s and 90s. I have 90s. to put up with while I'm training. Come on. Go. All right. Just racking those memories up. All right, let's go. Oh, wow. Okay, I've never done that. Grab it underhanded. Oh, okay. Yeah, grab it underhanded. And they just pulled to, pulled to here. Okay. They, oh, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. And you can do, you can do them. Uh, one hand at a time, too. Let's do them with uh, two-handed. I got it. Yeah, well, bilateral. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's throw a 20. Well, you didn't think there much be a, a difference overhand versus oh, underhand. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes all the difference. Wow. Makes all the difference. Yeah, the way, the way that the machine is made is to be performed underhanded. It's yeah. almost like a, it's almost like a, uh, like reverse doing it. Bent like, over. Yeah, yeah, like a reverse bent over. Except, you know, obviously you got the chest pad, so it braces your back. Yeah. You're not, you're not including any other unnecessary muscle groups. Yeah. Good angle. Come on. Got it? Go. One more. Okay. Two. Two. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Good. 
That's awesome. It's a good machine, right? I love this. Yeah. How's the equipment settling into the home gym? Just a little difference yeah. between my home gym. <laughs> I'm kind of like purgatory. This could be happening. <laughs> Okay, so question. Yeah. On something like this for you, do you have one side stronger than the other? Like a bicep, you know, if you're right hand prominent? Yeah, you know, I think, you that, I think that it's pretty common if for somebody to have a strong side. Yeah. But you know, uh, typically not by like, you know, like where I can do two or three more reps on one side than the other. So it's you probably know. almost more like isolated small yeah, muscle you know, groups. Yeah, you know, it's funny you, you bring that up because a lot of guys, you know, have have one arm that say is half an inch or three quarters inch bigger than the other, and they think that that's something wrong or unusual. It's not. You know, even my arms, and I was known for my symmetry, were about a half an inch difference. You know, so it's a pretty common thing. Do you have a stronger side, Craig? Obviously, this one. This one's a little stronger, huh? <laughs> yeah. One more. All right, let's go. Good. This is his good side, okay? So if he starts showing me up, you know, it's like. We're not doing that. Good side. <laughs> We're not doing side by side. <laughs> All right, man. Let's go over here. Chris, I could tell you a great story. Lee and I were going <laughs> through the gym, or going through the airport one day on an exhibition. Lee had won the universe. So he had this nice hanging bag. It was black, trimmed in gold. Lee Labrada, Mr. Universe. So I tell my mom, I go, hey, I need a hanging bag. So a couple days later, I go back to my mom and dad's house, and they give me this bag. And I see it's black, it's trimmed in red. I went, God dang, this is nice, it was vinyl. So all of a sudden, we're going through the airport, right? And we looked like, we did, we looked like almost like twins per se. And we're walking down, and Lee's walking down like this, and I'm walking down, they go, oh my God, it's Lee LeBron and Mr. Universe. Yeah, but who's Mr. Time? <laughs> it was a bag that when you got a subscription to Time Magazine, they gave you a free bag, and I was like, I'm Mr. Time. Mr. Time. I'm Mr. Time. Uh, Endless. That's funny, man. Mr. Time. <laughs> All right, here we go. Come on. Just as vascular. Unbelievable. Come on. Push. No mediocre. Come on, Lito. Awesome. Okay, here we go. Just as vascular, but now if I can figure out what to do with all this gray hair. <laughs> hey, it's a crown. It's a crown of thorns, man. So no rotating the shoulders, correct? No, just straight up and now. Keep, keep your head uh, straight up. Yeah. There you go. Right there. And that's it. Good. 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 Shrugging's easy. Putting them back is harder. Putting them back, is the, that's the hat trick, isn't it? Man, it's just like, it's just weird. We try not to get too emotional. It's almost like we, we never stopped. Oh, yeah. It's, it's like weird. You, it's like you don't even miss a beat. No, I mean, yeah. it's just, like, it's, it's great. Is, it's freaking But you know what, that's, uh, that speaks volumes about the condition that we've both stayed in. You know, you're in great, you're in great condition. Yeah. All right, here we go. Tomorrow watching the football game. <laughs> can you, can you, Robin, can you help me get this drink? So maybe that's what I'll do. I'll have one of those hats that you, you put the beer can right here, then you have the straw coming down. No, no, but it's a lean body hat. Oh, is so it? You have to have to put the protein drink here. You have to put the, the lean body shake here with the straw. Come on, being in LA again. Go. That away. Oh, there we go. So you remember, you remember that world gym in Santa Monica? And we'd go in the morning, go up the stairs, and right there behind the desk was Joe Gold and oh. Ed, Ed, Eddie Giuliani. Eddie, 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 Arnold Eddie. would be on the life cycle. Yeah. And uh, reading Lou, a script. Big Lou Frigno would yeah. be out there on the floor, you know. And I, uh, I saw Lou make the mistake 
of dropping the dumbbells on the floor one oh, time. Oh, I remember that. And you remember Joe? Yeah, we went behind Joe the desk. Joe jumps from over the desk, and he goes over and he starts reading Lou yeah. the Riot Act. Don't do that again. Yeah, that was a good group. You know, we had uh, Zabo up there. Remember Zabo? Yep. Zabo Kaczewski. There's a name that you don't hear very often. <laughs> Yeah. But Zabo was one of the uh, original strongmen from Muscle Beach, you know, and he had these incredible abs, and he was a title winner. The guy basically would come in and train in the morning, go fishing, read books, do it again, rinse, repeat. Uh, I was telling Chris that it, it was a brotherhood, like, unbelievable. Yeah, it was. I'm, not, I'm sure they kind of have that stuff. You all have that now in the, in the bodybuilders coming up. But back then, smaller group, yep. niche. Yeah. I wouldn't call it a cult. No, but it wasn't. But as it, big, was, it wasn't as big as it is today. No, you know, and so it was a smaller following. It was yeah. a tighter, tighter uh, group. Tighter, tighter group. Yeah. Although I'll tell you, you know, just, uh, just, you know, uh, my experience has been, you know, going uh, backstage at the Mr. Olympia with Hunter nowadays. Yeah. You know, those guys get on good. Yeah. You know, the majority. Of them, you know, you have a few jackasses, but yeah. You know, the majority of them get on, uh, get on pretty well. You know, and have a lot of respect for each other. It's a great sport, man. It's a great lifestyle. Yeah, it really is. It's like anything else. You get you get out of it what you put into it. Yep, that's it. Oh, so you put a little more effort that let's go. Than let's I let's go. Put in a little more effort into these <laughs> hyper extensions. Okay. That was one thing we didn't have to didn't have to have to do a whole lot. We had to do weight adjustments. Yeah. But body parts. Oh yeah. Straight. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Like height wise, we didn't have yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much straight up. So. Yeah. It wasn't what, like you what, were working out with a six foot two guy. Then right. Found right. Out. What Craig is alluding to is the fact that. You know, we're both about the same height, and we were about the same weight, and uh, about the same strength on all of the different exercises. So that made life a lot easier in the gym, you know, just in terms of being on the same program, using the same amount of weights on yeah, the different there exercises Yeah, there wasn't a stuff. lot of time breaking down weights yeah. and, and expending extra energy on unnecessary moving around. Yep. I like this machine too, Lee. It feels good, right? Mm -hmm. Remember the other ones usually go straight out, yeah, right? Yeah. So do you not, design not, most of this stuff or no, did you no, no. We, we, we have purchased uh, this stuff uh, ready-made, you know, from the various manufacturers, manufacturers. But but it is it is cutting edge stuff. Oh, there's no doubt. You know, you know, like the um, you know the uh, prime equipment, you know, the uh, arsenal, um, you know, hammer strength. Uh, I mean, there's uh, there's a lot of really Really I nice, recognize nice the machines. hack squat. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. That hasn't changed much. No, that hasn't changed much. <laughs> no, the basic designs haven't changed much. It's just that they've gotten a lot better, yeah. you know, at angles, safety features, you know, just and how smooth the machines are. I would are. say, if anything. You know, yeah, the bearings are just, I mean, they use these big, big linear bearings on a lot of these That's machines. The biggest, now, you know? the biggest difference I say in all these, these workouts that you and I are doing is just basically the mechanics of how the machines are built. They're just but, smooth, right? Man. Always like to finish the back movements with hyperextensions for the for the spinal rectors, lower back as some people call it. You know, uh, not like a deadlift. Yeah, we've done our share of those. Oh yeah. Uh, not nowadays. Um, you know, uh, and I would recommend you know for anybody, you know, past 60, probably hyperextensions, you, unless you're somebody that's adept and knows how to um, how to train with deadlifts. Nothing wrong with deadlifts. You know, they're good at any age as long as you're functional. You know, but they've got to be done correctly. Otherwise, you end up throwing a lot of stress on your spine. You know, it can open you up for uh, spinal uh, spinal injuries. Now, that being said, deadlift can be a great exercise for strengthening the muscles of the back, the spinal erectors, and helping you avoid spinal injuries. But again, it all comes down to correct form. For the average, no ego lifting. Yeah, no ego lifting. Yeah, yeah. For the for the average trainer, I would say that the hyperextension is a safer alternative. You know, for strengthening the spinal erectors without creating a lot of risk. Check this out. Look. Yeah, this one. Isn't that crazy? Holy smokes! Let's not talk about the rest, Chris. Let's start our bicep workout with the uh, machine preacher bench. And this is another one of Lee's probably best muscle groups here also. Not that one was more favorable than the other, but definitely a strong point. Okay. All right. Good. Good. Come on. Okay, go. All right, come on, come on. Drive, drive. One more. Good, one more. Come on, Craig. Come on, Craig, come on. Yeah. Good. So I remember the, 
Remember this guy, I won't name any names, but every gym, every gym has one. You know, that guy that, uh, <laughs> that's got- Working out like this. Yeah, the guy that's got the 20 inch arms, you know, and everything else is kind of like lagging, you know, uh, including the legs, which are probably also like 20 inches. And uh, <laughs> they'll, walk pa they'll walk past the uh, preacher curl, they'll get in there, they'll do a few sets of preacher curl, come back about three minutes later, do another set of preacher curls, you know, and then it's like they wonder why they don't uh, place uh, well at, at competitions, you know, because they lack, uh, lack the balance. Well, anyway, one of those guys. That's when you remember, say, yeah. how are you walking on your arms? Yeah, how are you walking on your arms? <laughs> remember the old Hank's gym? Yeah. I won't name any names, yeah. but, you know, I, I saw the guy back in the locker room, and, you know, being, being young, stupid, I think I was like 21 at the time, you know, it's <laughs> like I didn't think anything about hurting the guy's ego, you know, but I walk up <laughs> to him and I go, you know, you really need to work your back. You know, you need to bring your back up if you're going to play swell at the competitions. I was just being honest with him, right? Well, so he just gave me this look, you know, like that he gave me. What this, do you know? What do you yeah, think yeah, you're going to become? What do you know? <laughs> he, gives, he gives me the stink eye, you know, and then, uh, you know, and it's like I thought that was the end of it. Well, let me tell you what, brother. You know, about five minutes later, you know, I'm, I'm getting dressed, you know, it's like I'm down on my skivvies and he comes up and, uh, and, he, and he goes, my back's okay. You know, I go, uh, yeah, you know what? On second thought, your back is okay. You know, so <laughs> we, we left it at that. Come on. Good, 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 good. Come on. Got it. One more. Push. Good. There's a guy, same thing. I won't name names, but I, I know him pretty well. You know, he gets in the machine and and they just pick it and he's, it's not doing short reps. He's literally doing this. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going. Yeah. Unless the doctor told him something to strengthen your ligaments. Or yeah. <laughs> well, and you know, uh, you, you see that a lot, uh, especially in gyms when the guys are doing the leg presses. You know, they got the 1,200 pounds on the leg press and they're literally, they're cracking their knees about three degrees. All right, guys. So what we're going to do next, we just finished the... Preacher curl, and we are going to a concentration curl. So we're going to do these uh, obviously one one hand at a time. You know, knee against the bench, elbow against the inside of the leg, you know, and then just basically straight up. You know, just getting it nice and smooth. There we go. Thanks, Greg. Good. Good. Yeah. I love that. It's a good exercise. Preacher right? versus concentration, man. That's a great combo. Back to oh yeah. man, great. Great. Come on. You got it? You got it. Come on. Come on, push. Push. Come on. Go. One more. Come one on. More, one more. One more. Come on. Oh yeah. Yeah. Good. Come on. Mind. Come on. Use it. Come on. Two. Two. Win. Okay. He's not twenty. <laughs> he just looks it. Yes. I wish. The important thing is to look the best that you can be at each age, right? That's what it's all about. You know, at some point, you know, it becomes as much about health and uh, longevity and functionality as it is about looking good. So that's really important and that's uh, one of those things that we as uh, bodybuilders have to make the adjustment as we get older. A lot of bodybuilders, especially bodybuilders that have been doing it for a long time, like Craig and I have been doing it, you know, they have a difficult time in adjusting from the workouts that got them there, meaning the ones that built them up in their younger days. They have trouble uh, uh, transitioning from those to workouts that are more appropriate for the limitations that invariably come with the aging process. Okay, that's not to say that you throw the towel in, that's to say that you work with your body and you recognize that you probably are not gonna be able to push as much weight as you did in your 20s and 30s and that kind of thing, but the thing that you wanna to strive to do is to be the best that you can be at every age. You know, so you know your workouts have to shift from one primarily of putting on muscle 
and looking good, you know, to one of also having those objectives, but also, you know, uh, paying attention to the fact that your joints may have limitations, uh, that you want to have health, that you want to have longevity and functionality, you know, because let's face it, when I look around me, there are some of my cohorts that I used to compete with back in the day, you know, that have had real structural issues, you know, where, uh, you know, where they're, uh, uh, you know, very limited on what they can do now because of abuse that they put on their body back in the day. So as I'm fond of telling anybody that'll listen to it, and I tell my son Hunter this as well, there's life after bodybuilding. Amen. But don't be a car guy. <laughs> We're going on a comedy routine. Yeah. We're going on tour. But don't be a car guy. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna finish up with this exercise here. One of my favorites, hammer curls, you know, and uh, basically that works the biceps brachialis and the bicep brachii, you know, and uh, can really add uh, width to the, uh, to the um, uh, arm from the side and from the uh, back uh, uh, bicep shot. It can really add a lot of uh, impression of width, you know, so uh, this is the target muscle right here, okay? Give, hey, hey, before you do yeah, yeah. one of those shots. Yeah, one of these? Yeah. <laughs> So the important thing on this one is not to get too carried away by how much weight that you use. The important thing is to have good form. You know, keep the elbow by the side as much as you can. You know, and then a slow negative or lowering of the weight. They feel good, right? Yeah, that pattern. Because some, uh, sometimes I'll start out with concentration curls. Yes. And then go to a straight bar curl. Right. Mix it up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mix it. Mix up the order of the exercise. Keep your body guessing. What Joe Weider used to call in the old days. The confusion principle. Is it? Confusion principle is not a bunch of bodybuilders running around the gym screaming, I don't know. <laughs> it's keeping your body guessing in yeah. terms of what's gonna come next. It's almost like sh so shock, that, shocking the muscle. So it has to adapt. Yeah, I don't know what it is about people wanting to skip legs. Craig and I never skipped legs. I, I love legs. We love workouts. training. We legs. love leg workouts. All right, bro, come on. I'll tell you something about body parts in just a second. All right, come on, drive it. Good. So whenever they would, whenever they would ask me, Lee, do you have a body part that's your favorite? Do you have a favorite body part to train? I go, no. So you have to look at body parts as your children. You gotta love all of them the same. One were harder to love on certain days. <laughs> you know, once uh, once we start started the workout, you know, pretty much the way that it ran was I did a set, you did a set. So you rest long enough to let your, let your partner do their set or rest long enough to catch your breath if you're training by yourself. But the cadence is important, you know, for keeping the intensity up. But nowadays, there's a lot of distractions in the gym, you know, that type of thing. Sometimes uh, in the past when I've worked out in crowded gyms, what I do is I just put in, you know, I put in my earbuds, turn my music up, you know, and I just kind of go into my own world, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, and it keeps you from getting interrupted too. You know, yeah, and I think the benefit that you had back then was when we did go into a gym, I think people that kind of knew you and I going in there, especially you going in there, they knew not to approach us unless it was a novice guy going, oh my yeah. God, like and, you when, know, we, when we first went to of LA. Of course, of course. And you know, I mean, even to this day, I, I, I did it back then, I still do it today. I make time to talk to anyone that wants to learn. If yep. they want to ask me questions and stuff, you know, I just ask them to wait until I'm finished training. Yeah. You know, and, but that's and, what, and that's what he, but that would be with well, anybody, Lee. Exactly. exactly. You, you took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. You know, because you got to you got to respect their space while they're training. Right. You know, I think it's just part of gym etiquette not to interrupt them. You know, that kind of thing. So um, keeping the intensity up is important. Keeping the cadence up is important. Rest long enough to catch your breath in between sets if you're training by yourself, or to allow your partner to do their set. But then you know, keep keep uh, keep the cadence going because that will increase the intensity on the muscle and will get you uh, better results. You know, so uh, that was uh, that was back in biceps training with uh, Lee and training partner Craig the Surf, my old Mr. Olympia training partner. And um, if you guys have any questions, be sure to leave them below. If you have any comments, be sure to leave them below and let us know what you want to see. And uh, thanks for watching, and uh, be sure to hit the subscribe button for more videos. Peace out.